Hey everybody, thank you for joining. I've put this deck together because it's an amalgamation of all the questions that come in from you guys about what's going to happen in 2021. Is there gonna be a stock market crash? Where is Bitcoin going? All of these types of factors. So I decided to put together, as usual, a presentation. And they are all my predictions, my top 10 predictions for the year 2021. So without further ado, let's jump in and talk about my top 10 predictions. First of all, very quick disclaimer, these opinions are mine, and they are designed for entertainment purposes and educational purposes. None of this is financial advice. I had to get that out of the way. Second of all, as you know, the themes of this video are a couple of things. I'm going to talk a little bit about the virus and the vaccine and stimulus and Bitcoin, Tesla, where we're going to go, which industries are going to be hot, which ones are not, and those types of things. The other thing that's very important is nobody can predict the future. There's no Nostradamus out there, and even he himself was wrong quite often. And third, there are hundreds of point of views out there on the internet, so you can find somebody to agree with you on anything. So I don't want this to be contentious, but more interesting and valuable for you. So let's jump in and first of all talk about money, the reason we're all here. So the US and the European Union will continue to print money as we go forward. This is because of the lesson they learned from the global financial crisis back in 2009. They didn't print enough stimulus fast enough or long enough. And as a result, the recovery took a lot longer and they're not going to make that same mistake again. The other thing that's important is the first tranche of US stimulus is going to be coming very soon. It's going to be worth about $1.9 trillion in the US. And that's going to fuel things like Robin Hood, Revolution, and Bitcoin. There's an interesting comic here. Basically, Jerome Powell needs a bigger helicopter to print more money and distribute it to everybody. So that's the first thing, number one. Now, a very important rule as well is don't fight the Fed. Many of you probably know this one already, but when there is a lot of stimulus and a lot of money in the system, it tends to raise the stock market. So don't become a bear when there's a lot of money being pumped in. The third thing on this note of money is there's a concept called modern monetary theory. And basically what this means is debts don't matter. Forget about trying to balance budgets, etc. Just, you know, keep on printing money. And you can see it's already taking effect, where 26% of all US dollars were printed in 2020. And so far, about 7% of all US, US dollars could already be printed in 2021. Now, the reason there are things like taxes is they are there to curb spending. And the reason they are there is not to raise money from individuals to pay for infrastructure and everything else. They can just easily print money. But the reason taxes exist is to control inflation, which is the death knell of any economy. It's a very punitive tax on people. So inflation, however, will be there. It's going to be somewhere between 7 and 15%, I think, in 2021. And that's going to be real good for things like gold, Bitcoin, and real estate. My point number two, real estate, just where we left off. Real estate, uh, I believe, needs to be looked at in two separate areas. You have your residential real estate, and I think that will continue to do well because of the short supply and the fact that financing is a complete no-brainer. You can get a 30-year fixed rate for 2.5%. Considering inflation will be 5, 6, 7 to 15%, the banks are actually losing money by giving you money. And you can also write off the mortgage interest against your taxes. So it's a double boost. So borrow as much as you can and buy a house. It's a good hedge against inflation going forward. Now, commercial real estate itself, I believe it will bottom, but the economy still has some more gremlins to work through. There's still a lot of damage out there, which I'll discuss a little bit later as well. That's real estate. And I'm going to do a subsequent video on real estate and how I approach that market as well. Number three, Bitcoin. Now, Bitcoin is, of course, very important and near and dear to myself and many of you out there. Uh, in full disclosure as well, when it dipped below 30,000 today, I got a fill on some more at about 29.4. And uh, anytime it goes beneath 30,000, it's gone there four times, I think, in the last 25 days or something. It just gets gobbled up. And we're in that range between 30 and $35,000. And it's frustrating many of you, but it's important to think that basically Bitcoin went from 10,000 to, to 42,000 in 92 days. And now we're stuck at 30,000 to 35,000. That's still an extremely good return. 
Now, what I want to really point out is there is huge treasury and institutional accumulation happening right now. And what I believe is there are never going to be any more than 14 million coins because a lot of coins are lost. And if you see my previous videos, I show the math behind that. And also about 1.3 million Bitcoin are already locked away in treasuries. That's 10% of the supply. And another 9 million is locked away in cold storage for a whole host of other reasons. So that leaves an available float of between 3 and 5 million. Let's call it 4 million coins left. That is very, very, very few coins. I want everybody to be aware. And the other thing that's happened lately is the whales are getting bigger and there are more of them. And the definition of a whale is somebody that has a thousand or more Bitcoins. So my question is, who's selling them the coins? Where are they coming from? It has to be individual retail investors that are scared of the FUD and it's made them nervous and it's forced their weak hands to sell. So I urge everybody, try hold on if you can, unless you really, really need the money. Um, it'll be well worth it in the future. Now let's talk about two quick numbers. First of all, if the S&P is said to put 1% of their treasury into Bitcoin, the Bitcoin price will go to $70,000. And if the S&P 500 puts 10% of the treasury into Bitcoin, Bitcoin goes to $400,000. So just think about that for a second. Already, if you look at the handful of companies that own Bitcoin around the world that are known, they have already 10% of all Bitcoin that's available. So just think what will happen to price once these big treasuries start dabbling. We already had an insurance company last year uh, jump in and we don't know who's next. Speaking of corporations, Michael Saylor from MicroStrategy is having a two-day conference. It's called Bitcoin for Corporations. And he's going to urge and teach and convince corporations that are in the S&P 500 and other places to invest in Bitcoin and the treasuries. So just think. Uh, what's going to happen there. And this is all happening on the 4th of February. So may the 4th be with you because I expect big things to happen on the 5th or very soon thereafter when treasuries have board meetings and they meet with their CFOs and they say, well, it's time for us to invest some of our money. Now, I just uh, read the earnings report for Tesla. I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute, but they have $19 billion in cash. Again, depleting at 7 to 15% a year. How long is that going to last? So it's only a matter of time before a piece of that should end up within Bitcoin. So again, may the fourth be with you. Good time. Speaking of the fourth, now we're on number four, the vaccine rollout. So the vaccine development blew me away. We have two uh, vaccines that are greater than 95% effective. There is talk of more virulent strains, more contagious, but we don't know if they're more deadly yet. However, I believe that the death rate should fall given that protective populations are receiving the vaccine first. The world is expecting up to 5 billion vac vaccines to be produced in 2021, and 300 million people are hoped to be vaccinated in the United States by the end of the summer. That's the plan. So can you imagine what's going to happen? So we should see huge improvements in lockdowns going away, everything opening back up, people traveling again, you know, airlines or cruise lines may say, well, show me your, show me your vaccination paperwork. And once you have it, you can come on board. Um, that could be possible and that'll have a huge impact on everything going forward. A quick note on some of the details regarding the actual countries, the best and worst supplies, supplied countries. Canada is the best with over eight vaccine doses per person. They're really on it. United States, second, UK, third, Australia, European Union, Japan, and then Vietnam, India, Israel, Switzerland, all these top countries. So they should uh, be recovering very quickly. And a quick look at some of the drugs that are available. AstraZeneca and the University of Oxford have one, Pfizer, BioNTech, Moderna, etc. These are big companies manufacturing as quickly as they can. And there's a ton more in the pipeline. I think there's eight or 15 more drugs coming. So these vaccines have high efficacy and they're going to be widely available. So stay tuned. There is some debate if they're going to vaccinate children under 12, but we'll see if that happens. Now, the reason this is important and the reason I'm talking about C19 and vaccines is because it has an impact on many money-making ideas. And this is another one of them. So first of all, we are all hungry for vacation. We are hungry for the beach and the vaccine rollout will encourage travel. There's a lot of pent up demand for travel. 
So expect airlines, hotels, theme parks, possibly cruises to rebound. Like that example, you know, you can only come on this cruise ship if you show me, show me your vaccination paperwork. However, expect some bankruptcies. I'm sure there's hotels out there in a the world of hurt, some cruise lines, some airlines, and that could upset the apple cart. So bear that in mind and keep a tab on things as always. Uh, number six, a big game changer that could happen in 2021. Tesla only make 1.3% of all cars, but FSD is full service driving. And if that happens, that will be a game changer and Tesla stock could easily go to $4,000. They just released earnings. They are down in aftermarket about 20 to 30 bucks. And, but everything is down in aftermarket after earnings, even if they're good. I went with uh, some of that and I sold an out of the money call option against my long position in Tesla, just in case this type of thing happens. But the Delta on that position is 30%. So even if Tesla goes up $100, I only lose $30 per share on the actual option. Part of the good thing about selling these out of the money calls. Anyway, number seven, another game changer also related to Elon Musk is Starlink. And this basically moves everything to space. Simple way to think about it. All communications, all cell phone signals, all internet access will be handled by low altitude satellites. And this could severely disrupt telcos like Comcast and AT&T and others, and an IPO is possible. Now, if anybody has a way of getting access to that IPO early, that would be probably the, the hottest IPO of the decade, in my opinion. So we'll keep tabs on that for everybody as well. Let's talk about number eight. Number eight, current event, the retail rebellion. Reddit now has 2.7 million followers on Wall Street Bets Group. And these people have power and influence. And when they get behind something, with their diamond hands, they don't let go. So uh, shorting short targets will be dangerous as we recently experienced. And next up on their target list are companies like AMC, Nokia, Blackberry, maybe Bed Bath & Beyond, et cetera. There's probably other, some other bees in there. But again, don't get caught up in this actual retail rebellion and these Wall Street bets guys. However, if you're on the right side of the trade, you can do very well. Shamath invested in a Feb 115 call option, cost him about $25 a piece yesterday. He closed out his position today at over 400% profit. So think about that. Um, a lot of money can be made, but it's extremely risky business, but fun. It's like going to a racetrack on steroids. You never know what's going to happen. But again, be careful out there. Also, I heard there are some limitations on trading accounts. Companies like Ameritrade actually stopped individual investors from investing in these types of assets just to protect them. So keep that in mind too as you go forward. And again, dangerous stuff. Be very, very careful. Number nine, question I get a lot is, is there going to be a stock market crash coming? When is it coming, etc. I get this question every day from multiple people. So I expect volatility and um, what happens in the world today is things move faster. That means they move up faster and they move down faster and they recover faster. So the economy has some fundamental damage. And I think we need to really get to the bottom of exactly what impact that will have. My personal concern and has been for a while is the banking industry because of loan delinquencies. And, and also there could be a new strain of virus. There could be no stimulus. Who knows what could happen, but all these things could trigger something bad. Now, bear that in mind, it's very important to consider a correction typically happens once every 1.8 years. So if you consider the last big crash we had was in March, there's a very good chance of one happening again before the end of 2021. And also bear in mind that the S&P 500 is up 60% since the last crash. So even if it does crash 20%, you're still up 40%. But you'll see at the conclusion at the end why it's important to anticipate this type of crash and how you can prepare for it. So thank you all for those questions. Now, I also expect a broader based rally. I think tech and biotech could slow down a little bit with the exception of some very disruptive companies like Tesla and CRISPR. I think defensive stocks will rebound and the S&P could hit 4,500 this year at some stage, but it'll probably take a 20% dip at some stage as well, but it'll rebound very quickly. So I hope everybody got that. That was my top 10 predictions for this year. 
and the impact that they have on people. So what's the conclusion? What can you take from this? And again, if you like this content, you'll always see me put my money where my mouth is, speak very openly and honestly, look at data-driven facts, and give you information to help you guide your quick path to financial freedom. So the conclusion from my side is as follows. Very simple. Move to more cash positions. Have the dry powder ready. If there is a crash, you're in a position to get into things real cheap. That could be, you know, 20, 30, 40% off bargains. Ramp up on some of your skills around options trading. I'll have more courses on that as well that you can follow. So when the time comes, you now have time to get options authority in your brokerage account and have some cash on the side so you can get amplified gains when things do dip. Again, I'm a hunter in the forest. I wait for opportunities and I never feel compelled to trade. Sometimes I can wait months before jumping in on something. Uh, I, everything just has to kind of feel right for that good bet. So wait for the market dip to get good names at good prices. That's the conclusion. If you like the content, please hit the thumbs up, hit the like. It's very important uh, to me than anything because it shares the content with uh, other people and uh, bell notification to know when my additional content is coming out every single day. And finally, please subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much.